Hey, and welcome to the highlights of episode number 69 with Peter Kelly. Now, some of my favorite parts of this episode were when Peter talks about unkinking our hose so we can live more in alignment and why living in alignment to your truth is so imperative. Plus, I also love how she unpacks why we are being hired by Earth and the new way to live, lead, earn, and give. I love her take on this. And there is so much more epic wisdom that this girl unpacks in this episode that you do not want to miss. So to listen to the full podcast and to get all the info in the show notes, head to melissaambrosini.com forward slash 69 right now. Peter, welcome back to the show. I am so excited for today's conversation, but can you please tell us what is Earth hiring us to do? Firstly, who is she hiring us to be? What is she hiring us to be? Like, I feel like we are such world-changing crusaders all the time. And the book is very much for that person, like the world changer, the game changer, the change maker, you know, the, those of us who feel like we have such a big mission on earth, no matter what it is. And she's speaking to us first and foremost and telling us to lighten up and to remember that our greatest gift to her and everyone here is our vibration and living in alignment and the energy we are constantly essentially sending out to the world via energetic text message. And that's the that's the message that I was so tapped on the shoulder to, to share is that we have got the action down pat, right? We know we know how to do our do. We know how to crush it, grind, hustle, create, give, share. We know how to do all that stuff, but often we're doing it at the mercy of our vibration. And that's where she's really asking us to rise up is can you collectively, firstly individually, but collectively rise up into a vibration that is more like mine. That's what she's asking us to do because we will know harmony with planet earth and that means i'm talking about we'll know harmony with each other we'll know harmony with mother earth the world will be effortlessly changed we'll eradicate homelessness we'll move to sustainable energy all of that amazing change we want to see that will happen effortlessly when we collectively give enough of a shit so she's asking us to never take our eye off the action but to focus more on our vibration so that we can be in more harmony with her and that's sort of the new message that's coming through and there's so much else. I mean, she talks in the book. I say she talks because I felt like she was just talking through me. The new way to live, lead, earn, and give. You know, I'm sure we're going to talk about it on this, on this chat. But there's so much, so many things that she's asking of us in terms of how to how to live, lead, earn, and give in a more rewarding way, so that we can be a more thriving collective uh, for the planet, for our children, and for each other. So how do we know if we are out of alignment within ourselves? Is it a feeling within? When we're out of alignment, we feel like a deep resistance. And not a deep resistance, more like a, uh, you know, like a, oh, uh, like that's not meant to be in my life. I've evolved beyond that. This just doesn't feel right. It's just that undescribable feeling, but we all know it. We all know what it feels like. It's when that relationship is not for us anymore. It's when we've evolved on from the business. It's when we haven't had the conversation that we need to have and it's just kinking our hose and blocking our life force. You know, all of those little things, we are we are committing to something purely out of obligation and it's not rewarding for us anymore. It's just all of these different ways we kink our hose. Maybe you're like, you're living somewhere that is not uh, rewarding for the thrivey thrive you want to be in. You know, it's, it's just those feelings of, oh, this isn't right for me anymore. This is blocking my life force. I am kinking my hose. I need to change this. I need to upgrade it. And we always know what that is. How do I unkink my hose and get back into alignment? I feel like we're always in alignment as children and then we grow up and we start playing in the world of obligation and should because we're just borrowing expectations and projections and demands. And it's so normal for us to go through that phase in our life because we're learning about our relationship with our soul. We're learning about what it feels like to feel in alignment. And so it's so normal and so like imperative to living in alignment to also know what it feels like to be living not in alignment. And both are perfect to the journey. But the first step to living, to unkinking the hose is to firstly uh, admit to yourself quickly and swiftly and honestly and lovingly where your kinks are. And remember that admitting things to yourself is just admitting it to your own heart. Like you don't have to be polite. 
You don't have to make it up to sound good to impress anyone. You don't have to pretend it's not there. It's just between you and your heart, you and your soul, you and your tap. Where is there a kink? And how can you lovingly and at whatever pace feels right for you, unkink it? So whether it's, I've got to get out of this job, whether it's, you know, this relationship is not for me anymore, whether it's, I cannot go on Tuesday evenings to this, or whether it's, I need to stop eating meat, or I need to, whatever whatever it is, you have got to have just an honest, loving inquiry. And remember that uh, the first the first step to anything is awareness. And often awareness can dissolve things on its own. It's, awareness is such a powerful thing. But then to just lovingly and at whatever pace feels right, address them and take care of them. So why is living in alignment and unkinking our hose so important for the way that we live, lead, earn, and give? Like, why do we need to get in alignment and unkink our hose first? We overcomplicate our lives because we are so scared of really admitting to ourselves what we know we need to do to make our lives better. And I think that's so true. So when we can unclutter, when we can put up our boundaries, when we can get really honest about what's not in alignment with us anymore and protect our alignment, then we can be clear. Firstly, so then how does that correspond to how to live, lead, earn, and give? I think that clarity is just everything, that awareness is just that everything, and that life force is just everything. When we are in our life force and we are accessing that true, authentic, unbound, unencumbered energy that is always available to us, we can lead our tribe in a, in a very authentic, real, powerful, fun rewarding way we can lead ourselves in our lives in that in that very loving tender way we can be in a better and more rewarding relationship with money with which earth is so hiring us to do and i know we spoke about that in a previous podcast chat but we can live in alignment with money we can have this unencumbered relationship with money where we can honor it and respect it and appreciate it as part of our teammate as we fulfill our life's purpose which is rewarding right we can um, have a better, more beautiful relationship with our businesses as entities. We can live in more harmony with each other, which in the book is at the very end, I talk about Team Earth. And eventually, we can live more like Mother Nature for Mother Nature so we can be in more harmony with her. And you have all the energy available to you to do whatever it is that you're required to do or want to do if you can just be ruthless about cutting out what absolutely doesn't mean anything to you. What is the new way to live, lead, earn, and give? What is it? What is it? Share it with us. When I talk about the new way to live, I speak a lot about in that section of the book, raising a vibration, uh, living alignments and boundaries, knowing your values. And then I talk a lot about play. And I share about an ayahuasca ceremony I had, which I felt like gave me an upgraded program in regards to play and how play is such an important part of our life and our work and how we've been tricked into thinking play is a distraction from our work, but it's actually so much of our deepest work. And we can access so much from the vibration of play. And I talk a lot about circulating energy and how circulating energy in our life is so masterful, even if it's like circulating our energy in terms of working in a new place, changing up our schedule, just allowing newness and freshness into our life. We have to be really intentional about that because we get so into a routine, whether it's you know our daily routine, we work in the same place, we eat the same thing, we go to the same cafes, we, we have the same rituals, which is great. But then we wonder why there's no freshness newness, you know, magic just knocking on our door. It's because there's so much stagnant there and we have to be masterful about circulating it. When I talk about that in the book, although it's some people are like, wow, I never heard that before. I think about how tribal people used to live and how they dance around. They were circulating energy, right? It's just, it's circulating energy is so important. And some for some people, it looks like getting on a plane and moving cities. And I think about how I feel when I get off an airplane, like when I land in London, or a new city, like I'm so lit up by the, by the newness and the energy. I feel like a creative powerhouse. Like I can sit down and I just like write the most banger posts and just, I could just sit down and just write a whole book. I could just feel so lit up because I'm circulating energy. I'm allowing this newness into my life. So whether it's on a micro level of changing our day or whether it's on a large macro level of changing something about your life, like change, flipping your schedule around, like maybe don't wear active wear every single day. Like maybe wear something vintage on a Tuesday, you know, like maybe wear like your date night undies on like Wednesday and you just, just mix it up. Like maybe start brushing your teeth with your left hand, like start dancing your way to the fridge. Like you can't expect newness to come into your life if you're not doing anything new. You know, we get 
so hell bent on living in integrity with the world and living in integrity with everyone else. I do what I say I'm going to do. I'm a person of my word. And oftentimes we are doing that, but we're not living in integrity with ourselves and with our soul. Living in integrity in the new way is about radically honoring what our soul is asking us to do. And sometimes that means changing your mind, leaving a business, walking away from a business deal just as it's about to become profitable, like things like that. And rather than being like, oh, and I have to do it because I committed, it's reprioritizing. Yeah, but my soul is asking me to do this. And when we can live in alignment with our soul, we are living in alignment with source, God, spirit, all of the time. So we have to lose the guilt there. And that doesn't mean being a flaky individual. It means you, you know, you're very sturdy and solid, but we've got to stop honoring commitments out there at the mercy and at the sacrifice of commitments in here because again then we're sacrificing and we're letting go of our vibration and we have to stop doing that as a collective are there any other physical things that you do to implement play into your life yeah and it and you're so spot on it is a vibration like play is not something like people think oh it play it's having fun a lot of the time like when i try and have fun like if i go to the movies i'm like that's not that's not very fun for me like sitting on a ferris wheel is not my idea of fun like i crap myself on a ferris wheel i, I can skydive but i cannot sit on a ferris wheel i don't know what it is it's just not my idea of fun so it's, it's not about i want to go and have fun it's about being playful being light lightening up like making a joke at an inappropriate time because that's that vibration is going to gift whatever it is so much more. It's like, it's, I am like, and in my book, you read it. I sort of went from paranoid Peter, which was what I was like. My mom, my mom used to call me that to like being more like just playful, but I'm still so working on it. Like I'm so working on it because I'm hardwired to like, you said, sit down and get shit done. But it is, it's some, it's the, Vibration, you give things. So for instance, when I'm writing an email, if it's getting like a little bit serious or intense or boring, I'll just like, and I don't even know the person I'm emailing. It's just like slipping in some random fact of my day and a little, you know, something that just takes, shocks them a little bit. And for me, it just lightens my day and it reminds me like this interaction, like everybody just needs to lighten up and just get that little like chuckle or that just that little like, hey, it's, this is not that serious. Like the fact that we're editing this audiobook is not that serious. Like, hey, getting this Amazon delay, who fucking cares? Like life's such a privilege. Like let's lighten up about this and play. So for me, it's about l trying to lace play through everything I do. Like W like wearing my favorite vintage denim jacket, like on a Tuesday when I'm not actually going anywhere, but I just want to feel really playful. It's about memes, like memes. I'm obsessed with memes and I'm the same as you. Like I don't like scrolling, Insta scrolling Instagram mindlessly is a kink for me. Like I, I stop like, but I love scrolling memes. And to me, sometimes I'll just give myself like 30 minutes, go and find like the most horrendous, offensive, hilarious memes you can and just laugh at them and then just tag people in them and the ones that are too offensive to tag people in on instagram like in case people see that you did it like screenshot and send it to just people who you like so i find memes like i literally mean this with all my heart is like a therapy because it's teaching everybody to lighten up about serious shit like even spiritual stuff people are making funny memes that are spiritual stuff and i love it because it's teaching us like Hey, even while you're healing and and growing and you know striving, stop and realize that there is there's like so much to laugh at, and there's so much to just stop and realize how serious we take ourselves all the time. How has motherhood changed you? It's like an instant like filter of what matters and what doesn't. So before being a mother, we all um, I don't know about everyone else, but I had so much time and space and energy. Like you're sleep. I was sleeping 10 hours a night. I, you know, I w had all the time in the world during the day to do whatever I wanted to do. And so there was, was so much opportunity for me to give too much attention and time and energy to things that really didn't matter to me because I had time and energy. I had it to spare and I had some extra to exhaust. And yet when you have a child and, you know, you, you have this essentially it's not a, I wouldn't say it's a full-time job, but you have something to do and somewhere to be and someone to be with all the time. And you're their only mom. You know, I'm her only mom that instantly. And now I need to know 
what really matters and what doesn't. Because every hour or two or three away from her, it better return a good return on investment for me in terms of fulfillment, happiness, contribution. Like, like this hour that we're spending together now, like it's so fulfilling for me. <laughs> 